Hey there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now recently ARM launched a new CPU core design specifically aimed for servers. Now I didn't cover it because I think maybe it's a bit kind of on the left field for us here on this channel. However, it might be worth looking at if we actually start to see it in some real uh, server products. However, following that announcement, there was an interesting discussion in which Linus Torvalds, of course, the father of Linux, chipped in about why he thought Intel was winning so well in the server space and ARM wasn't yet making the impact it needed to. And it isn't because of price and it isn't because of performance. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Okay, so as part of the discussion, the first thing that Linus pointed out is, is that when you develop any kind of software, you develop it inside of a working environment, whether that's at home because you're a hobbyist or actually at a professional place of work because you're developing a commercial product. But in either case, when it comes to be deployed uh, in a real server, whether that's at a customer site or it's something that you find on the internet, you tend to deploy it on the same hardware that you use to develop it. And the reason for that, of course, is that during the development of the testing, you have actually uh, spent a lot of time making sure that software works the way it should, and you don't want to introduce new variables, new conditions by moving to a completely different type of hardware. You want to deploy it on the same hardware that you built it on. Linus expressed it like this. If you develop on x86, then you're going to want to deploy upon x86 because you are able to run what you tested during development. And this is really the opening point of his argument. One of the reasons why Intel has been so successful in the server market is because PCs exist actually in homes and in workplaces where you can do very, very similar kinds of development and you have the similar kind of hardware and the similar kind of setup. And you know that when you move over to a huge big server, it doesn't matter how big it is, it's actually gonna be almost exactly the same thing. And then when you deploy to the cloud or to a server in a data center, actually you're not looking specifically at the prices of that architecture. You might be looking at the prices that one provider offers over another, but you're not looking to see the price of that particular architecture because you want that architecture because you've actually used it during development. So even if it costs a bit more than an alternative, let's say like ARM in the data center, you're still gonna go with what you know because that's what you developed on. Again, this is how Linus expressed it. You'll happily pay a bit more for x86 cloud hosting simply because it matches what you can test on your own local setup. And this is where Linus argues about the need for ARM PCs or ARM development boxes. Now, if you're basically a hobbyist developer or a professional developer, you have developed your software and you've probably done it on some kind of PC. So it may have been running Windows, it may have been running Linux, it may have been running FreeBSD, whatever the operating system is, but it's still an Intel chip inside of that kind of standard case with the power supply and the PCI and the SATA drives and the, all the stuff that we know that you find in a PC. And really, a server is just a glorified version of that. There are some differences, of course, you know, backup and, you know, and kind of redundancy and all this kind of stuff. But basically, it's the same thing. You can run Windows uh, on a desktop and you can run Windows Server. You can run Linux on a desktop and you can run Linux on a server and so on. And so the point is, of course, is what you're familiar with, that is what you're going to develop on. Now, what happens is when you're a developer, even if you're a small company, you want to buy a PC for development, it doesn't cost you very much. Of course, you can pay a lot of money, several thousand dollars for a PC, but actually you can pick up entry level PCs for only a few hundred dollars. So the price to entry to getting onto that platform is very low and actually still gives you quite a lot of performance, a lot of disk space, a lot of memory, and you can just buy what they call a white box. I mean, it doesn't have to be a Dell, it doesn't have to be a HP. You can just buy a custom box, you know, from anywhere. Uh, you can buy a motherboard, you can buy a hard disk, and you can buy a case and you can build it yourself. And now you have an x86 development environment ready to go. Thousands of small companies ended up having random small internal workloads where it was easy just to get a random white box PC. Then as the workload expanded, it became a real server. So what he's saying here, of course, is that if I've got it on a random white box PC, I've got my Dell or I've got one that I've just built myself, I've got one from my local computer hardware store. Of course, when that workload actually expands and I had one user, then I had 10 users, now I've got 100 users, now I've got lots of customers, now I'm actually generating revenue, 
I actually want to deploy that to a proper server. And of course, I don't at that point say, oh, I better switch over now to a different architecture. I better switch. No, you just say, give me one of those, but make it big and make it fast in the cloud, please. And that, of course, is why people move from PCs to an Intel server in the cloud. And the only way that changes if you end up saying you can deploy more cheaply on an ARM box and here's a development box you can work on. So of course the point is if you can get a development boxes, and I don't mean development boards like the Raspberry Pi, they are, they have a specific uh, purpose, it's $35, there are other types of boards, you know, from Odroid and other people, and they're there for specific things, for doing kind of little robots and for doing learning and all that. But if you want an actual PC-like ARM-based machine, they're either very expensive or they're very hard to find, or in fact both. And this is why we need more ARM PCs. We don't necessarily have to have the support of Microsoft or the support of Apple or any of these big companies we can use an operating system like Linux, but the point is we need a PC design performance level kind of box, okay, that isn't a Raspberry Pi, that comes with lots of memory, that has, you know, SATA drive connectors and it has maybe even PCI Express. It has all the things you'd expect to find, but it doesn't cost $3,000 or $4,000 or $5,000. It actually can, it costs, you know, just a few hundred dollars. Therefore, lowering the entry into this platform so that when you have a choice about, oh, I must just quickly go out and get a developer box to do this project, well, actually getting an ARM-based box would not be expensive. And of course, the, the point is, is the cost shouldn't be uh, difficult here because you've got devices like the Raspberry Pi only cost $35. You've got other boards like the Odroid boards and there are plenty of others, Banana Pi and so on, that show that you can build fully working computers with ARM-based processors at not very much cost. So even if you tripled or quadrupled that cost to $100 or $200 maybe even, okay, but as long as you added like SATA connections onto it and maybe PCI Express and maybe a few other things, you're actually going to get yourself a very, very reasonable kind of development system. You don't want one gigabyte, you want four gigabytes or eight gigabytes. And today you should be able to do that in just a few hundred dollars. So why isn't it being done? As Linus puts it, actual hardware for developers is hugely important. Now, the reason why this conversation started was because people said, but of course you can do cross-development. You can develop on Intel and then you can deploy on ARM. Now, it's a very good theory and, and, you know, and it's a very attractive theory, but of course, again, it comes down to this point that when you're developing something and then putting it out to customers who are going to actually pay for it, pay for the thing that you've been developing, you want to minimize the risk completely. You want to make it as easy as possible. And the easiest path is not cross development. The easiest path is actually to take what you've been developing on and deploy it in something that's very similar already in the cloud. Linus put it like this, cross development is pointless and stupid when the alternative is just to develop and deploy on the same platform. And that is a thrust of his argument. If you can already do it on the existing platform you're using in your office or at home, then why would you want to change? But you might as well take the easy path, the path of least resistance, the path of least worry, the path of least mishaps, and deploy on the same thing as what you have uh, developed on. So the solution is we need ARM boxes, ARM PCs that are not Raspberry Pis, okay, that have greater capabilities, greater capacity, but don't cost two, three, four, five thousand dollars. We want something that costs, you know, under 500, under 300, you know, without a monitor and so on, would be much better. So please, if you are a hardware company and you make servers or you make PCs, let's have a solution where we can have ARM-based uh, development boxes that are readily available, easily shipped, easy to buy, and then we can start development from day zero, from day one on an ARM box, rather than having to try to think about switching over mid streams. Hello there, my name is Gary Sims. This is Gary Explained. I really hope you enjoyed this uh, little video of mine. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Also, don't forget to subscribe. And uh, well, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.